In this video, I'm going to teach you how to read scientific papers better than 90% of the doctors I know. Step one, get a good background. As a clinician, you already have a really, really good big picture, bird's eye view of the topic. You're smart and you realize the importance of the results. But if you're like most doctors I know, you're a little bit less comfortable with the nitty gritty details. That's what establishing a background is for. So what you're going to do is you're going to read through the introduction of the paper. If understanding a paper is like building a piece of IKEA furniture, a good introduction is like an instruction manual. It should give you all the tools you need to understand the whole paper. But you see, not all papers are written well. So what do you do if the introduction is bad? It's okay, we have a fix. You're gonna pull some key words from the introduction. Main topic area, primary techniques used, and the significance of the results. Then you're gonna pull up an AI tool like perplexity.ai. This is one of my favorites, and I find that it works the best. You're going to punch in the following prompt, more or less word for word. It goes like this. I'm a third year undergraduate student majoring in biology. Perplexity usually gives me a fantastic overview of the topic, but sometimes it makes mistakes. If that's the case, then I will go ahead and find what's called a review article. This is one of the most information dense, efficient ways to learn about the topic. So now you're finally ready for the abstract. Uh, all right, I used to always get lost while reading papers. That is until I figured out this one trick that I'm going to share with you to always keep your bearings. And it's a trick that we use in the abstract. It's called a North Star sentence. It's kind of cringy, I know, but bear with me for a sec. So you're going to read the abstract and get a big picture idea of what the authors have done. And then you're gonna fill in the blanks to the following sentence. The authors used their primary method to show their main results. If you ever end up getting lost in the paper, always refer back to this North Star sentence because every single experiment in the paper is going to be supporting this one finding. So pro tip, if you're having a hard time figuring out your North Star sentence from the abstract of the paper, skip down to the end of the paper where the conclusion is. And I find often here the authors have laid out a better big picture explanation of what they've done than they have in the abstract. So check it out. Before we get into the most important part of the paper, I'd like to briefly talk about the methods. I don't know why I did that. So the method section is usually the most technical and difficult to understand part of a paper. If you're a clinician that's new to reading papers, honestly, I would recommend skipping this part. If you need to really deeply understand a method, I would advise you to just take that method, plug it into some AI tool like ChatGPT or perplexity.ai, ask it for an overview. The single major exception to this is if you're reading a clinical study uh, where you need to be familiar with inclusion and exclusion criteria. That's information that you're only going to find in the methods section of the paper. Now for the most important part of the paper, and that is the results section. To understand the results section, we're going to use what's called the what, how method. It goes like this. Step one is to figure out what the authors have showed. You're gonna notice a trend here. We're gonna to try to get the big picture first. We're gonna start by reading the subheadings in the results section. The idea here is to try to get a feel for the flow of ideas. You wanna ask yourself, can I follow the chain of logic that's going on here? Another pro tip, check to see if the paper has a graphical abstract or a model. This will usually be either the very first figure or the very last figure of a paper. And it's a really, really easy way to get that sort of big picture idea that we were just talking about. So we covered what the author showed, but an important thing to keep in mind here is that all scientific authors have an agenda. They're trying to sell you a story and it's up to you to decide whether or not you can believe it. To do that, we need to look at step two of the what how method. And that's looking at how the authors did what they did. Dive into the experiments that were done within each subheading. For each experiment, ask yourself, what is the question that the authors are trying to answer here? Honestly, it's really, really easy to get lost in the weeds here. So whenever you feel like you're getting a little bit overwhelmed, just go back to that North Star sentence that we made earlier. A really important thing to note is that if you don't understand any single experiment, don't sweat it. 
it's okay. Just skip it and keep moving through the paper. So long as you have a good big picture idea of what's going on. So often in the text of the results, the authors are going to try to play things up. The authors are going to say stuff like, this result was significant, significant, or it very much improved. To know whether or not that's real, we actually have to look at the numbers. We have to look at the data. We have to see if things are actually adding up. So for the experiments that you do understand, go to the corresponding figure and look at some of the graphs, look at some of their images. Think to yourself, do these results make sense? So a couple of tips here. Number one is that statistical significance is pretty overrated. Just because something is statistically significant does not mean that it's meaningful. You need to put it into context. Number two is are the experiments properly controlled for? A control and an experimental condition should be exactly the same except for the single variable that is being tested. If there's anything else that's different, the results become really difficult to interpret. Number three, so a lot of the time, scientists will turn to animals like mice or rabbits or do experiments in cells. You need to ask yourself, how well do the results in their model organism translate to actual real world results in people? Okay, so finally, this is the easiest part of the paper to read. And that is the discussion section. So in the discussion section, the authors will often expand on the rationale for a couple of different experiments. They'll brag more about the results and talk about why it's so important, blah, 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 blah. I usually skip the section, to be honest. And I think as a clinician, if you already have a good idea of why these results may be significant in clinical real world outcomes, you don't really need to read them either. And you're pretty much done. Just before I end things off, one last really important point that I want to leave you with. I see a lot of clinicians taking the results of a paper at face value. But one really important thing to keep in mind is that you should understand how something was done before you choose to believe it. And that's doubly true if you're going to take what you've learned and apply it to treating patients. Thanks for sticking around until the end and happy reading.